So my G7X is on its last leg, but look who it is. Yeah! I'm in Boise, Idaho of all places. Yeah. And uh, just came from uh, from Salt Lake City, Utah. I feel like a gosh darn world, world traveler to all yeah, these mean. alien lands. <laughs> Up and, here in the north. <laughs> <laughs> so we're racing over to uh, receive a truck. You know, I don't like to just come to places. I want to like see how it all works. You know, I think that you guys do too. And so uh, we're going to geek out on microfiber for a day and a half here and record some podcasts, shoot some video, talk about of my current microfiber line, uh, maybe make some some tweaks, some changes to it, and yep. uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure the guys have some fun stuff planned that we're gonna shoot some video. Yeah, on. you literally get to stick your hands in every type of microfiber towel there is. So I like, I like to see the I don't know why I like to see the quantity. Yeah. Oh, like, you're gonna love this. I, I like to see large piles of cool stuff. That's part of the reason why I want to build Obsessed Garage yep. so I can have large piles of cool stuff that I can. Sort and organized. Yeah, exactly. That's going to be the best part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're headed out. What is it, like 10 minutes from here? Basically. Yeah. We're only a few miles, so. Seems like everything's close in this. In, in it is Boise. and it isn't. Uh, downtown Boise, like where we're at right now, is kind of landlocked, so you don't, there's no like, you know, major highway or freeway to get to other places, so it's all 35 mile an hour roads. No, oh, so. gotcha. Yeah. But it seems like it's rather progressive. Yeah. Is this a Mormon town too? Kind of uh, like. Kind of. Like? Yeah. There's a high concentration of Mormons. I mean, I'm yeah. one of them. So. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, the city, like Salt Lake, is very progressive. Yeah. The yeah. outside of the state is still very conservative. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, I'll get you guys in uh, in the in the headquarters here in a minute. So, well found a ride. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is sweet. So that's how towels come in. Big old container from somewhere in the Far East. China. Hey. There's the man. Welcome. I come bearing cameras. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming all the way. Yeah. So, yeah. So we got a. He's always on camera. So we've got a uh, truck. This is how it happens. The first few cases are loose because they can't they can't squeeze the pallets in at the very beginning. Uh huh. So the first cases are loose packed. Once we get those out, now it's quick and dirty with the uh, forklift. You know, I'm more excited to learn about how this happens, like how you get stuff here, than I am about anything else. Like oh. the actual the running of this is what I'm excited about. This is a brand new towel for us. Oh. I just snipped it. I haven't tested it. We've been waiting six months for these. Shoot. This is the first pack, so you're going to get this one. I like that. Now, of course, this is one of those things where if it works great, we're good. <laughs> if it doesn't, we're going to screw that. Yeah. <laughs> but, so I'm a little bit nervous. So what we have here, these are a special glass towel. We call them black diamonds. Mm -hmm. And they're 1616. And they sit, because ideally, or typically we recommend either a, a traditional glass towel, this is a really smooth surface with the corrugated edges. Mm -hmm. Uh, or surface or a waffle wheel. This towel sits right in the middle between the two of them. Um, in the case of the glass towel, a lot of times people people either love them or they don't necessarily care for them too much. People yeah. who don't care for them is because you get dry drag. Yeah, I don't like how grabby they are, right? That's, what happens is towels of that material work best when they're a little bit damp. It's like a chamois. Yeah. Chamois perform better when they have a little bit of moisture in them. Mm -hmm. It's the same with that kind of glass towel. This glass towel it's a hybrid. does not have dry drag. So we'll just hand them out here. You can see it's kind of a different look and feel. And it's got these little diamonds in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that scrubability. It, yeah, it feels very similar to your normal glass towel. Right? Yeah, yeah. But it, it sits right in the middle. It has the best, basically it has the best qualities of the waffle and the best qualities of the uh, so I was asking, glass. how the heck do you, I don't know if you want to give away all your secrets, but how do you make this happen? Do they send you samples and then you say, do this or that, or do you fly there? And I mean, how the heck does that work? Good question. Hopefully you know us well enough now. 
we're, we're pretty open, full disclosure. Yeah. Um, competitors have had this towel for a little bit. We've kind of kind of sat back for a little while because we wanted to see what kind of result. We already had a whole slew of glass towels. Yep. We didn't necessarily want to add one unless there was a value add. Right. Uh, in this case, there's a value add. Mm -hmm. And because it sits right in the middle and yeah, we're pretty confident. I'm loving this. I, you'll notice things you're going to find different about our factory than other factories. Um, other factories, what's called a four corner zip stitch, and they just go zip, 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 zip yeah. on, on typically on Chinese towels. You won't see this on Korean towels, but on the Chinese, because they're trying to save cost, yeah. and they're trying to get that price down. Our factory, you'll notice on the corners, yeah. see how it's, it's rounded? This is the only corner where you, where the two come together. Yeah. And that's, I mean, just, this pulled at random. This isn't like cherry picked or anything, <laughs> but they do a great job on, on nailing that corner. Yeah. Because if you think of it like weak link in a chain. Yeah, when you um, have four of them versus you, one, yeah. You've got four times the, the risk yeah. uh, of it coming apart. In this case, you've got a solid edge all the way around, very slightly rounded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm thrilled. I, I, so this, so this giant container is like straight off the boat from China somewhere. It landed this past weekend up in Seattle. Right? Yeah. And uh, we get one to two containers a week. Yeah. And so it'll have, it'll hold 105 to 145 thousand towels mm -hmm. inside. I can't get containers here fast enough. Yeah. Um, we are. You'll notice our warehouse has a lot of empty spots. Oh yeah. Yeah, we have over two million towels on back order right now. And this is only one of our warehouses. We oh. have another one we'll show you across the street. Oh, shoot. But we just, we cannot get towels in fast enough. And unfortunately, you've experienced firsthand uh, some of the environmental impacts that, that China has enacted. Yeah. Starting last fall. Yeah, and that's why we have so many towels in back order. Right. It's, this is kind of a good news, bad news. So we've got towels finally starting to roll in on a regular basis again, but we're getting larger and larger customers that are wiping us out yeah. before we even get stuff in. Half the half this container is already pre-sold. Yep. Yeah. So it's like great, we got them. I but yeah. I can't put them out. On a in much smaller case, scale, I'm 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 realizing the same thing. Yeah. It's downstream, and I, I talked to one of our larger customers yesterday. He said. It's actually, and you can probably speak to this as well, because you work with different vendors. Um, he said it's not exclusive to just towels. Yeah. But he said products, and it's not just China. It's He's having trouble getting uh, products out of Europe. Yeah. And, uh, it's probably partly due to economic prosperity at the moment. I'm sure that pendulum will shift at some point. You know. Yeah. It's Hopefully it's not. There. So these are these are where you do packing and shipping for Amazon. Correct. So you don't do FBA, you actually do the shipping shipping. No, no we do FBA. I, I don't have the bandwidth. We have twenty two right. employees. I don't have the bandwidth even with twenty two employees, I don't have the bandwidth to handle all the orders we get on Amazon. So they're packing the packs to get to Amazon's distribution centers to then fulfill the it's, orders. It's our way of quality control. Yeah. Uh, so that because that's you know, we're known for, for quality and value. Right. And that's our way of making sure our team is really, really good at pre-screening. Mm -hmm. um, is every towel going to be perfect out of the box? Nope, mm -hmm. they're not. And uh, you know, despite all the factors we might put into place at the factory level, you're still going to have a few issues here or there that get missed. So if you sent it to Amazon and let them pack it, they're just they're you know less likely to sort through towels and say, right. well, this and one has a bad edge or exactly. this one's exactly. a little cockeyed or um, from the from the laser cut or something like our, that. Our yeah. team's trained; they they pick them up really fast. They yeah. they go through a, a pretty good routine. All right. So how many towels do you throw away a day? A lot. <laughs> um. Well, I'll, to kind of show you. Yeah. Show me around. It's actually the good news is so. All these boxes on the back wall, uh -huh. that's where the B grades go into. Okay. And so as they're screening through, uh, say like with the spa towel, that's what you're seeing here. Yeah. Typically the edges are, are great. Uh, edges are solid, the material is solid. If there's any kind of an issue on a spa towel, it's gonna be a stain because it's a white towel. Yeah. Um, in the manufacturing environment, it's gonna pick up something here and there. Is this the same as the car wash towel? Yeah. The one it's, that I use, just white? It's a little bit heavier weight. 
Okay. Same size, but a little bit heavier weight. Car wash towels are 320 GSM. These yeah. are 365 GSM. Um, and these go to hotels and stuff? Is that where you're shipping? Um, health clubs, fitness clubs, yeah. huh. uh, spas. spas. And uh, it's it's actually, it's been a solid, solid seller for us on Amazon for probably three, four years running. Interesting. Um, but with in the case of the white towels, we do not have the factory prepackaged those at all because yeah. of that issue. Because they're yeah. not going to take the time for quality yeah. that our team does here. Yeah, and so someone at the factory sure. drops a batch on the floor and drags it and then, yeah. yeah. You know, as much as you want to think, yeah, Stay they're... Yeah. And go, oh, yeah. So this is our, our last defense before they before they head out. But we we do tens of thousands of packs every month. So did, did you sell those the B grade towels at like a discount or have say fire sales? We do. Um, we have a number of local businesses. Yeah. That we uh, that we sell them to. That's cool. And they'll buy large quantities, and it's it's yeah. a win win. Yeah. yeah. Um, like window factory, cleaning companies and yeah. detail shops. Because the factory will replace them for us. Uh, we'll get replacement towels for any of the B grades that we have. Um, and so, but I, I'm out the cost, say, of the shipping. Yeah. So by selling the, the cases of B grades, I'm offsetting the cost of the shipping and making a little bit extra. Yeah. But we don't, that's not necessarily. Right. A, it's not your main business, but it's, you know, well, being we efficient. Sell, yeah. Well, we also sell local so that we can keep an eye on who's who's getting what so yeah. that, right. uh, you know, we can keep that. So they're not re reselling. We don't want B grades showing up in. Right. Where, wherever Missouri, yeah. and somebody you know is selling them as A grades, it's like, wait a minute, no, 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 no. <laughs> this way we can control yeah. um, that the B grades are here. We have a roofing company. Um, they love the Creature Edgeless. Huh. Creatures have been a fantastic towel for us. Yeah, I love that thing. One of our best sellers, and it works really, really well for this particular roofing company. Yep. So they buy uh, like 50, 80 cases a month yeah. uh, of the Creatures for their roofing business. They hmm. do huge roofs and, and they find that they work well. So to answer your initial question, sorry we got very long winded. It's not as many B grades um, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, years ago, possibly you would have seen much more going out in this. A lot of these boxes, they won't get filled for months. Yeah. I mean, it might take two, three months to fill a box. Others, within a week. If it's a really popular towel, then yeah, you're gonna go through a bunch yeah. if there's a bad, you know, bad batch or something, something that we've identified within that. Um, we'll pull them. I won't hesitate to. to pull so these, them off. you guys have over the years have made tables and things. Are these? Yeah, yeah. These are just <laughs> interesting. solid packing yeah. tables. So yeah. Although here you'll notice in these, we we get these at Uline. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. use this kind of a towel or towel. I was looking kind of at table. these same tables. They're solid. I tell you, they will probably last a hundred years. Yeah, John and I put them together. And then... Yeah. So, how often do you guys get people? Obviously, regularly. Not, well, we get them regularly enough to, to warrant a little storefront. But basically, this allows people that when they come visit, they can come check the place out. They yeah. can get stuff. Um, and I'm thinking about the same do thing. Two or I mean, we get on on reality we get maybe two or three customers a day we do one one hundredth of a percent of our business locally right yeah right so right. for us it's it's mostly just uh uh you know when we host clinics and stuff for like the porsche club or any of that stuff mm -hmm. this allows us to have a storefront they can buy from local detail shops have a reason to come in say hi yeah you know so we try and have a selection of just about everything that we sell uh, those are all the car wash towels in all the different colors. Yep. And then these are mostly all prepackaged um, Chinese on this side that they can use. Yeah. And then uh, this is the nicer Chinese and then all the Koreans on this side. And then, of course, all our stuff. And then our fuel wheel. So yeah. there's a towel you've been wanting to touch. It's I'm going to be playing with towels again here to see, make sure I'm doing the right stuff. Yeah. So then we've got Optimum PNS, uh, Detailer Helper Belts. Um, you saw KXK and IK foamers and stuff. So this way, there's a sampling of toys that yeah. people can buy and enjoy. And then all our pads are like country pads, vacuum plates and stuff. So, and we make it. We joke that if uh, you know you want to get it cheaper from us, you got to come in the store and buy it because it's cheaper in store than it is on Amazon <laughs> or on our website. 
Because they have to pay for shipping. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, that's a good point. I was going to say, it's counterintuitive. You have to actually put the stuff somewhere. Yeah. So we've got but our, it's already all here. our merch back there, so shirts and hats and stuff. But this is just our little main front, yeah. you know, come hang out. And then uh, back here is our first packing room. So this is the main order fulfillment. So all the uh, website orders come in through here. Mm. And so they print out all the orders, and then we start packing them again oh, yeah. for those Uline tables. Oh, and then you, okay, so then you guys have the, bins. you have the measure, so you can measure boxes quickly, is yep. that the idea? Yeah, we put tape measures on either side, we've got tape dispensers here, and then there's tape guns underneath. Uh, we've got a little caddy over there with scissors and markers and all that. Everything that goes through gets triple checks. That's the new Edgeless 365? Yeah, 350, the or Eagle 350. 350. Yeah. That's the one that I want you to play with. Um, but yeah, and then they just pull from these bins, and as the bins get empty, we pull from the warehouse, so that way there's room, and then, you know, we've made up little pictures to teach guy, all the employees, you know, what new products are out, so that way they know what they're it's grabbing awesome. when they pull it, so yeah. brushes, and, and then back here's our little shipping setup, and so Will handles all our shipping arrangements and stuff, so we've got our, our boxes and packing, and then... How many how all. many boxes do you guys usually move out of here in a day, roughly? Will, how many boxes do we go through a day, do you think? Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a lot? A lot. Mm. More, probably, I think, counting all our orders, we'll probably go through on a big day. We'll have, you know, 150 packages okay. go out every yeah. day. So, um, and that could be various sizes. It could be this size or it could be... Yeah. Just depending yeah, on how small. much people order. Yep. Yeah, I don't think they've packed anything yet. So they're just starting out today, starting in the morning. So see Marla got one done right there. So that one's ready and they'll get the printing all the shipping label, all that. Gosh, I need to learn how you guys do like get <laughs> tape on there that nicely. Cause, <laughs> Cause I would try I was packing boxes and I have no freaking idea how to do it. The box is all wonky, the tape's all crooked. Yeah. I'm you... still not that way. So <laughs> They make it look easy. Yeah. And then the yeah, end bathrooms, John, our operations manager, his office. And then like Jeff showed you, three Amazon fulfillment rooms yeah. right here. So this is all Amazon packages. And I'm more interested in the warehouse. Yeah. But so I want to go see all the cool stuff. We'll do that. So this little back room, lockers for the employees, tool room back there. Looks, I thought this was like a little office room. Like yeah. it, that's what it looks like when you guys yeah. are filming or yeah. doing the podcast. Well, we originally built it to be our SEMA booth. Yeah. Sure we wanted to do SEMA, so 20 by 20, all the lights, and, but it works out really well because we can park a car in here, do videos. Yeah. But then when we do open houses with like Rupes or any of the big companies, they can come and use it. And then normally, like I said, we use our loading dock, but it's bigger. Yeah. So. All our stacks, we basically created these little tags for what goes in each aisle. Mm -hmm. down to like, here's Waffle Week, so when you call, when your dad calls at 2659s, they're usually always right here. Yeah. And so then I can run out and check and go like, yeah, I got two cases here. So, and this building is 20,000 square feet. Uh huh. So, and this is all the finished Amazon packs. So anything you buy on Amazon, here's what they've done. And so we built, we build all the packs. Yeah. And everything gets shipped to their Amazon. fulfillment centers, and then they distribute it. So we go through and build five packs, three packs, four packs. Wow. All that stuff. And then do you guys have to individually box them for Amazon, or uh, no? We no, you just we just we just send a box in a big box on pallets and. Yeah, and we just ship it, and then they open the boxes, and then they do all the fulfillment. More stuff. This is like smaller items, like button pads and buckets and brick guards, and 
gamma seal lids and then more box storage, empty box storage, so. 20,000 square feet, this is, but this is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take you over and show you the other 10,000. <laughs> is that one just jam full of stuff? Because nobody. Also jam full of stuff too. So how the heck do you move stuff back and forth? Do you just with go? That, everybody gets their pickup trucks and. No, with that, uh, with that uh, forklift. So we bought a nice forklift that we could drive across the parking lot. Oh, oh, it's not that far it's away. Just a, oh. Literally just across. The oh, okay, okay. There's a sign over there. I got it. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So then, back into the. Uh, this is our little kitchenette for downstairs. So. People need snacks or water or cooked food, whatever. And then grab my bag, we'll go upstairs, I'll show you upstairs. There's Dane. What's up, brother? And this is the upstairs. Business stuff happens. Here's upstairs. Nate and Stacy do all our e commerce and web stuff. These are all our order drawings. Same People what? have requested that oh. we draw a picture on our orders, and we started doing that, and that's kind of what made us famous. Hmm. So, everybody here draws. And then, this is uh, Jeff and Carolyn's offices, and our, so Carolyn's in her office. I'm, gi I'm giving away all your secrets. All of our secrets? <laughs> yeah. It's a family secret. Yeah. Our conference room. And uh, this is Jeff's office. The mad scientist's office. Yeah. We'll move his... That's where all the creativity happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, everybody has their process, you know. Yes, everybody has a big process. <laughs> we can tell who runs the business, right? Yeah, the boss. We can tell yeah. who's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the room. This is where all the magic happens. I thought you were recording down there. Okay. No, so this is the podcast studio. Yeah. So this we built, so we just had an extra office. Yeah. So bought all the Amazon, everyone on Amazon for just about everything. And you put a super wide angle, oh, you're using a shooter with a GoPro so you can get yeah. everybody in frame. Yeah. And this way we can, we have a nice soundproof room. Yeah. And because it's a separate hall, we can close that off and mm -hmm. it makes it nice to not have to worry, but. Yeah. And then Tim on the other side is our editor and he's got his room phone so he can talk back to us and not have any echo when he's in the unit and then because he works under Dane we built a pass through to Dane's office. Okay. So that's why Dane, Dane does all the editing and stuff for his stuff so yeah. So he can yell at Tim to get their doors shut. <laughs> and then Anthony's room. So Anthony's office. And so he's got he's a chalk wall kind of guy. So he writes stuff down and then marks it off and so then he's got a little light box for a little, little homemade <laughs> room to take photos in and then yeah and then this is storage stuff for supplies and things and then my office down at the end of the hall here our t-shirt and hats back stock stuff so you see it's amazing how you just kind of you have to put stuff wherever yeah. you got room, you know. There's use every room. use every spot. Let's just do it. So. so somebody comes, somebody you decide. Look, we're gonna do some merch. So yeah. now we got to figure out where to put yeah, it. Basically. <laughs> so and then my office. So I have a couple windows, which is nice. And so future growth. We got this corner unit that we want to grow into. We have got the end unit at that end of the building. Immediate growth is this yellow uh, warehouse. So they just put a new roof on that. We're working on the contract with them. This one's a little cramped. But... Well, this is no one's hanging out in here all day, yeah, right? This, not, this, this is a true warehouse. This yeah. is literally a true warehouse. So, uh, you know, have... new pallet racking, you'll be stacking it to the ceiling, right? Yep. Yeah, so we have, we have B grades here, we have. Uh, overstocks of stuff so for some reason we have 15,000 you know yellow terry towels so yeah. you know we got to put them somewhere so we yeah. them back here um, we've got IK foamers and sprayers back there uh, this backs off and everything but yeah this is the dream of every business is that you need to have more room to yeah, put more so stuff we, so 
like stuff shows up and then you have to just kind of squeeze it in and when you have time, right? Yeah, so that was the goal. Like we moved in here and it was like, this will at least take over all the leftovers. So we've got like pallet. Okay, maybe this is my next Caps. step, uh, you know, 10,000 yeah. square feet. Cause I can fit a lot of crap in here. Yeah, so this place, and it goes down. Yeah. Cause we've got a, it's like an L shape. And so he was looking for a studio space and we just happened to have an extra 5,000 square feet that yeah. we weren't using. So, so, so then he can use it, then you can use it if you exactly. need it. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's so, and that's all on a cable system, and it articulates, and it's on an electric okay. motors, so it moves back and forth. So we can pull a car in here, we can pull a couple cars in here, do some cool shots. And yeah, I can have fun with this. We brought that 959, our recent Wash Wednesday. Yeah, shoot, I'd be I'd be shooting my darn podcast right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> or unboxing videos. Yep. We're sitting here at a hall. I guess this is how it goes down at the rag oh, company yeah. where Literally. Jeff shows up <laughs> with some up. mad scientist stuff yeah. and it says, Where do you where do you think you guys could use this? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm standing here. Us, they give us different uh, materials to kind of work with, play with, with, test out. out. Yeah, and uh this is hard to see, but it has like little plastic, almost filaments in yep. it. It's ex un it looks like a soft, you know, in, in, in person, it looks like a super soft microfiber, but it has like this little spikiness to it. Yes. So we're trying to figure out: could we use it for tires? Could we use it for carpets? Anyway, I'm uh, I'm I'm in the inner yeah. inner I'm in the back <laughs> hall of how this stuff happens. <laughs> That's how we do it right here. <laughs> so we're just uh, we're just did verse. Well, I'm sure we'll have ten hours of podcast oh, footage. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're just uh, just recorded. <laughs> so what do you what do you, you you're doing a shoot of this car just for fun? Uh, yeah, um, it's kind of a, a sponsorship deal. Gotcha. Uh, they, give, they give you a really good price if, if I provide them with professional. Okay, got it. Uh, quality shots. So. Cool. I figured I know a good photographer and a good studio, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. a guy that knows a guy. It's, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a win-win situation, right? Yeah. So this is uh, Tyler's, Tyler's from uh, Sensport Graphics, GT350R. We're going we're gonna to go visit his facility. We're going to do an Obsessed Garage helmet. It's going to be awesome. He's doing uh, Troy's helmet as well, Troy Sauer's helmet. So they're doing a shoot here of the car in the, in the uh, photography bay. All right, whirlwind day. It's like I blinked and the day's over. Doing a whole lot of work here. Picking out towels. I just ordered 15,000 microfiber towels. So tomorrow, uh, so we'll, we'll wrap it up here at the, at the headquarters and then yeah. I'll go out and get some dinner. And uh, I don't know what footage I'll get for the rest of the night. Come back tomorrow, we're gonna prepare the pallet filled with for delivery. lots of towels, right. So I'm gonna be, you know, coming out with version, I guess, 2.0 of the Obsessed Garage microfiber package. Well, so, here you got to play with all the stuff. You yeah. Get to touch it, you get to Yeah, see you get to really vet it and dig in. And I have all the towels and I've been playing with them. And so I made a, an edge, you know, decision on what. Yeah, you knew a lot of the names already, which what, was good. Yeah, what 2.0 is going to be. So anyway, going out to dinner and uh, man, I'm going to have a lot of editing to do. So. <laughs> force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, to the floor, to the floor.